This video is literally just a love letter to the massive book slump that I had this month. It is officially October. It's officially spooky season. See, part of me loves that like saying like in my brain i'm like oh it's spooky season like so cute so fun love and then i say it out loud and i'm like is that is that really cringy of me i i don't know it is october the fall spooky vibes are in full effect scary movies on constantly i just watched hocus pocus for the first time yesterday and it actually came out on Disney Plus today so I may or may not be watching that later. So I, uh, I'm going to talk to you guys about the books that I read last month. Last month I did have a very very bad B word and that B word is book slump. Well I know it's two different words but just stick with me. And here's the thing it's not a book slump within the number of books that I read. I don't care about that that doesn't matter to me. The numbers don't matter. It's the way that this book slump made me feel is what really triggered me. I know that you guys are probably like this saying, this is so dramatic, just tell us about the books that you read. But I am going to annoy you and talk to you about my book slump. So it wasn't just that, oh, I'm not reading as many books as I usually do, whatever that sentiment is. It was the fact that I genuinely was looking at books and I and I was like I don't even want to look at these books. I don't even want to pick them up. Nothing at all interests me. I could not hold my attention span onto the book and it was a very scary thing for me because books are something that I've always loved. One of the first times in my life I looked at books and I was like I don't want to read. I don't want to read any of these books which was so weird. For me it was such a weird experience it made me feel so bad like i just felt so bad within myself because i wanted to force myself to read and it wasn't just that i told myself destiny don't force yourself to read because reading is supposed to be enjoyable don't make yourself read because you feel like you need to it was also the fact that even if i wanted to make myself read like it wasn't working like it was just like if i did try to make myself read i picked up a book and immediately closed it and had nothing to do with it. I think there's multiple reasons I was in a book slump. I think that I've definitely overexerted myself with reading because of just mental things that I do myself. With reading, I definitely think that I overexerted myself and kind of short circuited that part of my brain. And I am, as of right now, excited to read for October because, you know, it's fall. I have a lot of fall reads that I just bought and I'm excited to read them in October and November. But it's also because I have been going through things with my anxiety and feelings of depression. You know, feelings of depression makes it sound a lot less intense so we're gonna say feelings of depression and that definitely also contributed to my reading when you struggle with things like that you usually can't really focus on other things in your life and it sucks and it wasn't with just reading like i didn't want to do anything and plus this month was just hectic i was helping isaac move into his apartment in the middle of the month and then i went on a week-long vacation i just wanted to share that with you guys to let you know that it's completely normal you are not alone if you are feeling this way you know things will get better you just gotta hold on you know yeah so that's the story of my book slump for the month of september but now i'm going to show and tell you guys all about it so i actually don't think i'm even gonna go into order because i don't have a notion pulled up because i did slack on that this month too <laughs> so i'm literally about to just look at all of these books and try to remember no actually i'm not i lied i'm gonna go grab my laptop Let's see, this was my TBR for the month, and I didn't read really any of them. I read 10 books this month, I'm pretty sure. I think it was 10. I don't know. I don't really care. I read books for my fantasy video that I just uploaded. If you guys haven't seen that yet, then go watch that. I read Dance of Thieves and Vow of Thieves for that video. So the first book that I read obviously was Dance of Thieves, which I actually rated a four and a half stars. It's funny though, because at the beginning of reading this book, I literally couldn't even get past page like five. I was just like, I think it was because Again, I was in a book slump and I was really trying to still put out content. So I was trying to force myself to read books and I wasn't fully like digesting the information. And just most of the time with fantasy books, you really have to be paying attention to really understand what's going on. Then I finally picked it back up and I was like, okay, 
I, I want to read it and I really loved it like I said I gave it a four and a half which is really really good obviously but I really liked it I feel like at first like with fantasy books the first 50 to 100 pages are always kind of just uh, you know because it's really like the buildup of the story and it's not that it's uninteresting It's just that you're like waiting for what the story holds now with this one I would say that was kind of like the first 30 ish pages I felt like it progressed into the main plot pretty quickly, which I appreciated I really appreciate when any book just gets to the point and not like have a hundred page setup Which I do think some fantasy books specifically do need a hundred page setup because the world is so profound But this one got into it pretty quickly and also pretty quickly. I fell in love love with all of these characters they were so good if you guys didn't know this is a enemies to lovers that's like the whole entire like main point and let me tell you that i never want to read an enemies to lovers just regular romance again after reading enemies to lovers fantasy because let me tell you if you guys haven't read an enemies to lovers fantasy book it is 1,000 times better than just like reading enemies to lovers just regular romance book because there's always something so big at stake and like there's always a really really good reason that they are enemies like they're not just like Ugh, you know like they said this to me this one time and now I can't stand them no it's literally like I have to kill them to save a village's life. Stuff like that. It's not what it is in this book. The enemy lovers was perfection. The thing is that you fall in love with the two characters. So like you can see both of their perspectives of like why they're keeping information from the other person and why they feel this certain way about the other person. As soon as I read this book, like finished it, I immediately picked up Vow of Thieves and I was like so happy that I really liked these as well. The way that this book starts versus the way that book ends, this book kind of ends like really seriously. And then you pick this book up and you're like, the first chapter is like, wait. And then you're like back to like, this other stuff and you're like okay the plot of this book i will say i liked a lot better than days of thieves i gave vow of thieves a five stars i loved it like it became one of my favorite books that i have read this year you fall even more in love with the characters in this book and something that i like is that titles of these books make sense as you start getting into them you understand why they're specifically named dance of thieves and Vow of thieves i freaking love it's so good just the connection throughout this book and the stakes are so much higher in this book like there's so much stuff going on that you're just like on the edge of your seat the whole entire time like this book i never wanted to put down because i felt like stuff was always happening and always so important for the plot i loved it so i started the month off pretty good with those books and then i read season storm rune and rising I rated season storm a one and a half no, I rated Season Storm a two. No, wait. I think I originally rated Season Storm a two and a half and this one a one and a half, but I think I'm just bringing them both to one and a half stars after further discussion with myself and my brain of what I think that these deserve on my scale of a rating. And it's just because I did like the first Shadow and Bone book, but just like these two, it just felt like everything kind of happens at the beginning. Then there's like 200 pages of absolutely slow nothingness to me and then the end ends very well and then you go into the next book and then it kind of repeats the same thing but also i was a little mad about rune and rising's ending i was i was happy and mad at the same time it just kind of felt all for nothing to me at the end but then i was happy with like some of the things like that happened overall i was just a little disappointed with these i only read shadow and bone trilogy because i have this thing where one person said that hey like you should read the shadow and bone trilogy before six of crows that way you kind of have like the background information and it'll be easier so since one person said that it was in my brain that like i had to do it that way like it didn't matter if people were like you do not have to do that it didn't matter like to me i was like i have to read these and let me tell you guys you don't have to honestly i would tell you guys to just skip them all together you're really not missing much and the storyline isn't really that good what i did like however was the six of crows duology so we'll start with six of crows which i rated a four stars this i had a trouble with this again because after finishing the shadow and bone trilogy i got hit once again like a ton of bricks with a book slump like it just smacked me right across the face like i was like oh, okay like we're doing good we're kind of like fighting this uphill battle and then i just literally got like backhanded across the face with the book slump i then picked up six of crows and had to keep rereading the first like 10 pages i was struggling first like the 
I was struggling through the first chapter for like three days. Once I finally broke through that wall, I think actually I broke through the wall when I was on vacation. I was on the car ride to Florida and I finally broke through because like what else am I going to do? But then I did like take a break because I got like 200-ish pages in and then I was like okay <laughs> hit another wall with this. I need to like put it down for a second. Not because it was bad but just because like I feel like you have to be in the mindset to be reading a fantasy book if you guys know what I'm saying. So I put that down, picked up another book that I'll talk about in a little bit. But then I picked this back up. I loved it. Like I said I think I gave it a four stars. Well I know I gave it a four stars but I think I might have said that earlier that I did give it a four stars because I did give it a four stars. How many times did I just say four stars? The world will never know except you will because you can go back and count them. Fell in love with the characters. The storyline is so so much better like a hundred percent better in these books than the Shadow and Bone trilogy. It was so interesting to me like it was genuinely like I loved it. It was it's like they're pulling off this heist. So then I went on to Crooked Kingdom which I rated a four and a half stars. I loved this one even more. I will say the only reason that this wasn't a five stars for me is because this one is longer than Six of Crows because of the storylines going on in this book but like I just it got boring at some parts for me where I was a little bit like okay oh let's pick it up let's pick it up other than that I loved it the characters amazing the storyline amazing Paz and Inej in this book as characters respectively I loved them somehow even more than I did in Six of Crows like Kaz is genuinely one of my favorite characters ever that I went down a rabbit hole like scrolling through Pinterest of like people posting about Six of Crows the show because I think Kaz is perfectly casted for the Six of Crows show well Shadow of a show. The way that this book ended, I was a little mad at first when I read it because I was like, kind of felt open ended a little bit where there could possibly be a third book. That kind of left me a little confused. I bet I did. I overall, after thinking about it, I love the way that the book ended. Do I hope that there's a third one? Lee Bardugo, is there one in the future? Don't hold out on us. Earlier, if you guys know, uh, earlier, I said that I kind of took a break from the Six of Crows book on the road trip to Florida and the book that I picked up during that break was Icebreaker. Okay, let me tell you about this. I didn't have the book. I literally loved it so much that I went and bought the book. I rated this a four stars. It was perfect to get me out of my slump. I read this on my phone on Kindle Unlimited, so it's on Kindle Unlimited. You peeps can go read it. I think I'd seen like the author post the cover somewhere and I was like, wait, why do I love that? <laughs> why do I love that cover? And then I was like, okay, put it in my mind to read it. And then I didn't ever like decide to read it. And then I was looking through my Kindle Unlimited and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I should definitely read this now. Let me tell you guys that I loved this book, just this one book and its characters more than the whole entire off-campus series. I loved the, all of these characters so much more than the off-campus series. I cannot wait for the rest of the books to come out because I just love the characters in it. I like the writing. I like the setting a lot more. This was kind of like reverse Grumpy Sunshine where like the girl was more grumpy and the guy was like this whole entire like golden retriever energy. So if you're looking for that, also read this. If you like sports romances and you like the reverse Grumpy Sunshine, read this book because it was great. She's an ice skater. He's a hockey player as you can tell from the cover of the book. It was just such an enjoyable read. Like it was just so fun to read. Like I kept on like kind of putting down my phone and doing something else and then I was like no I want to read it. Like I want to keep on reading it and that's amazing when I read a book like that. So, oh okay. Why am I like forgetting? Okay and then, and then I read After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid which means that I have read almost all of her books. I gave this a three stars. I feel like most of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books fall into that three star category for me. I enjoyed them but they were not really more than a four star to me but I liked the meaning of them. This is one of those books where I appreciated the meaning of it. It follows a married couple. They're in a very rough spot in their marriage so they decide to take a year break from each other. There's just a lot of lessons learned in this book. I am not a married person so I don't know if it like hit its exact mark but I enjoyed it and I found the importance of it and I gave it a three stars. I then read How to Survive Your Murder and I have not literally seen one person talk about this book. I randomly picked up at Barnes and Noble one day. I gave this book a three and a half 
the stars. The reason I gave it a three and a half is because I enjoyed it a lot. It has a lot of scary movie references and if you guys don't know, I love slasher films. I don't love paranormal films. That's not my thing. But I do like like Friday the 13th, Halloween, Scream, all of that. Like those are my type of scary movies that I really enjoy watching and that is kind of like what the main character likes the main character does come off as a pick me sometimes like there were literal points where I, I was sitting on the beach reading this book and I was like literally making that face like I had realized I was making that face because I was like oh this was very pick that was such a pick me line to put in there other than that though it was just so enjoyable where I was sitting on the beach and time passed by like that. I didn't even want to get up from my seat because I was so intrigued. It was shorter chapters, so I felt like it was really easy to get through. I did guess the plot twists, like all of the plot twists I did guess. I didn't even care. It was more of a like a guess what I thought it was and I was really excited to see if I was right where most of the time with thrillers I guess it and I'm not excited to see if I was right I just kind of know I'm right and I, I mean I knew I was right I knew but I was excited to see how it played out because it was just super enjoyable it read like a slasher film and I felt the same way about there's somebody inside your house I read that last year and I also really enjoyed it because I felt that read as a slasher film and you know that's just another case of Netflix ruining that book when they turned it into a movie. It didn't follow the original plot at all and it really made me mad. Like I was so excited for the Netflix movie of some, There's Somebody Inside Your House to come out and I watched it and within the first five minutes, I turned it off and I was like, never again. It was just too different from the book where I was like, why did we even make, th make this movie then, you know? But I did really like it, it was super enjoyable. So if that interests you, then definitely pick this up and it's YA so nothing's like too gory but at the same time I was kind of surprised by like some of the stuff that happens in that book so if you but if you don't like slasher films you don't like descriptions of what follows slasher films definitely do not read that book <laughs> last book that I read this month Bunny by Mona Watt I think this book is interesting okay well not that this book is interesting I think this book is interesting to talk about I really don't want to put this book down you know like not like I don't want to put this book down but like I don't want to put it down here's my problem reviewing books like this is that when I review books like this I usually feel like I'm dumb if I didn't like it because I feel like am I missing a higher intelligence point with it do I just not get the point of the book but I do feel I get the point of the book I did go on reddit and scroll for like two hours about people posting about this book and what they think that this book means and I did get that when I read it the thing is is that for somebody who struggles with mental health as a I do. This book really made me feel very weird and dark. Like it put me in a very weird place mentally. And I just want to say that because as a warning that if you guys kind of feel the same, like I read, I'm thinking of ending things. And I felt the same way with that book that I did with this book, which is where I just felt so dark. Like I just felt weird and I just didn't feel right after reading it. And that's exactly how I felt reading that book, which I know was probably what the author wanted is for you to feel a little uncomfortable but for me I don't seek that out with my books I never want to feel that way because that can quickly spiral me into a very bad depressive episode I like guessed and I was kind of right at the end but I like also wasn't because like the twist was like kind of weird and also I just kind of felt like I felt that sensation that everyone talks about with this book where you're just like what <laughs> is going on not for me i gave it two stars those are all the books that i read this month hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys did like comment subscribe share all that youtube stuff that you guys know how to do that you guys want to do let me know down below if you guys were also in a book slump this month or if this month just felt weird to everybody else hopefully october is better you know october will be better at least that's what i'm telling myself so with that being said i will see you guys when i see ya peace